Just another video going over the second room. So as you can see here, I've done, as I was explained, I've had all my shit in this room on one side and then I moved it elsewhere, did the two walls on this side. So that's the color scheme I'm using. Um, and then the other, this is what I come, this is what we bought. So you can see there the, the color scheme I'm gonna go for. Uh, but again, just showing the amount of stuff ups particularly in those corners and um, you can see the thick spots like uh, just from about there like stuff like that all up the corner there that's really deep um, imperfections in the plasterboard and this is new gyp rock so i mean he could have got a plaster in here it probably would end up costing him less um, in, in time because you've got to value your time so if you're a homeowner or whatever is your time better spent at work because i mean i did this in about uh, 15 minutes I did this whole room okay so if you think you can do that in 15 minutes and pretty much get it all which I have um, like I'll I'll run around this probably two more times and little tiny things and then I'll block sand every square inch of this wall again um, and what I'll do because the, the skirting was nailed it wasn't gap it didn't gap along it so what I'll do is I'll, I'll sand everything I'll undercoat that skirting and then I'll paint the corners and the reason I'll do that is because it separates the wall from the ceiling, okay? So I haven't, I haven't yet reset the ceilings. Now you can't see that um, in this light, but at night, every joint is visible. So I have to do the same thing I'm doing here on every ceiling in the house, which I can do, that's, that's, what, that's my trade. So, um, but you can see here, like, uh, you see there on there? That's the, that's the join. So that piece in there is where the gyp rock joins together and there's a heap of bedding compound and tape and whatnot and it's usually machine sanded um, which I'll I actually just throw out my machine sander at the tip so now I'm going to have to buy another one I thought I won't need that again because I used to do this all the time um, and now I'm going to have to buy another one because these ceilings you, you're not going to hand sand them you know it's just too much right through the house um, I, had a, <laughs> I had a wardrobe there so I cheated a bit I, I went around it's not advised that it is going back there so what I'll do to hide them, I mean, it won't totally hide it, but I'll feather this edge out here with a roller and you may, may or may not be able to see it, I don't really care. If I have to repaint that wall again, I will. Um, so again, um, there's a bit in this, you know, like this is not something you learn in five minutes. This is years and years of, it looks like shit at the moment, but when I sand it, it'll be perfectly smooth. So, it, I mean, if you're a plasterer, you, you can see exactly what I'm seeing here. Um, you might use a trowel, you might prefer a scraper, or you use, use a cardboard box, whatever, whatever you can use to get it done, you know, like, um, uh, so this is, uh, this is just the second room, and I mean, you can see the colour scheme I'm going for. Um, so I like, all, all the colours I've painted in the house, I think grey, for me personally, grey with a white trim looks really good. You can see there, nice gloss white trim. Um, gloss white window frame. I'll just use acrylic gloss, which means you sacrifice a little bit in in the gloss um, as opposed to gloss enamel but it's also easy to use um, it doesn't fade so the gloss enamel which is what everyone used to use um, particularly in hotter areas if you get sun on it, it goes yellow and then if you've got to recoat it you've got to undercoat it and then then coat it twice again whereas this acrylic cloth gloss a couple of years time i want to give it a fresh freshen up i just give it a light wipe down and repaint it one coat of acrylic um, so that's a good tip as well um, Gloss acrylic is much easier to use than gloss enamel. Gloss enamel is like, I don't, I hate it. I friggin' hate it. So, um, I mean, yeah, I can do it. I did my trade with gloss enamel, but if you have to choose, and Bunnings don't be guided with those today because they're idiots. Um, they will probably steer you to gloss enamel if you want hot. It is, it's highly durable, but it fades and it looks yellow after a couple of years and it, it looks shit. So, um, like this room, has no window covering so you can see um, general Australian standards say that if, if there's no window coverings you've got to be standing it's a fair distance a couple of meters away from the wall to see and you can see there the lights come in I mean you can't see oh, I can't see anything really wrong with that so again I did this same same lot of preparation here I did over here right um, and I did the two walls moved all the shit um, because I've just moved into this house um, and then I'm doing the other, so I've basically done four walls and doing another four walls, but they're in two separate rooms. Uh, but just showing you, you know, someone that is a, a homeowner or watches videos, and you, you can watch my videos all day long, but you won't 
learn how to do this until you've done it for years and years and years and years. And then you'll pick up little trips, tricks and shortcuts and things you can do, um, understanding the types of paints, how to roll it, uh, all that sort of stuff. I've done a series, it's one to 10, I think, um, on how to paint a house, and I've numbered them one through to 10. And it's kind of a quick rundown on how to, you, how to roll, like it sounds simple, rolling a wall, it's not. And most painters actually don't know the correct te technique to roll a wall. Now that sounds ridiculous, but I've worked for companies with guys that have done the whole apprenticeship and they don't understand how to properly roll a wall so you don't get any joins in it, um, which I've shown in my video, okay? Um, so look up that one to 10 if you want to learn how to do this and learn, you know, I mean, it's a very valuable trade. You can spend, you can spend a thousand dollars and add tens of, tens of thousands of dollars to your, to your home. It's the best dollar value renovation you can do painting and floor coverings basically. Um, so that's just the the second room I've done. You can see that took me about 20 minutes. Um, you can see that that's what I'm trying to hide. So basically, what I'll do, like that's quite a lump. It was, it was actually like a like a lump um, just there. So I'm, I'm feathering this out, and then when I paint it, it'll look flat. It won't be flat, but it will look flat um, at least to you know anyone that looks at the house. I mean, if I was a painter, I could probably put a light on it again and find it find more. Um, but at some point I have to call it a day and go, you know what, that's, that's a million times what it was. Um, I also ripped up the floor covering because he's, he's put different floors in every part of the house. So he had a lino in here and then he had uh, wood, wood planks out in the next room. He had another one and, and everywhere he put floors, the strip between the floors was in a different spot. So I'm, I'm one by one pulling up all these strips fixing the bit of flooring and putting them all in, in one spot so it looks looks nice. It's just little things, but it makes a big difference to the renovation. So, um, I mean, if you've, you've bought properties, you've renovated properties like I have, you know you know all these little things, you know what, what things should look like. And some people just, like this guy's gone from room to room and he's bought, um, you know, whatever tiling was on special that week at Bunnings and then he's gone, um, you know, to my tent and bought whatever, you know, and so every room's got different tiles. So I'm gonna to have to rip all that up and retile it, which is fine, because at least it'll be new, but it's just not the way things are done, especially not on a new house. Like this is a new kid home. It's not a big house, it's only a four bedroom, one bathroom house, but it's still brand new. So everything he's done on it could have been done perfectly from scratch. If he had just spent a couple of thousand on a plaster, maybe it would only cost him, wouldn't have cost him that much to, to have the whole house set. You know, they do it in a few days, sand it all, and you'd have a perfect finish to paint. And then even if you were a crappy painter, you could um, you could still probably come in and, and fix up a lot of these little things yourself, you know? So you can see here again, see all that? So I'll be block sanding all of that, uh, but I'll be using the orbital, which is something I, I don't usually do. I usually do it by hand because it's generally not enough of it. And these patches here, so again, you're feathering that out and you're feathering that out and that out. So you're not actually making it flat, you're just making it not visible. Now you can, you can make these things flat, there's ways to do it, but uh, for the purposes of just um, a quick glance with the eyes, or most people do, they walk in and say, oh, it's freshly painted, that looks nice, and walk out again. Uh, this is what you have to do. You look at the corner, it's disgusting. See all that? That should not be like that. So now the correct way or one of the ways to do it is use a corner tool, which is a basically a scraper on a 90 degree angle. And um, you can do both sides of that. I just use the, the standard scraper because I've done it before and just fill all the deep spots. And um, I've also sort of fixed the, the join down here because there's a bit of a, um, that, that stuff's up there. So I'm trying to smooth that out. So I'll come back again and I'll just go down there real lightly and, and get it all. Things like um, this scratch, if you can see that scratch there, uh, there, that scratch there. So that was just left on the wall and painted over and it looked shit house. And the guys bought um, mist tinted paints, which you can go and buy mist, mist tints. So basically a painter like me will go in, will buy the paint and the paint shop guy will either stuff it up or use the wrong base or whatever. So what they do, I mean, it's a cheap way to buy paint is they'll sell them for like $10 a tin instead of 60, right? The thing with that is, is you've got every tin of paint you're buying is gonna be a different color. 
and it's it's not going to behave correctly because it's probably got the wrong base, the wrong chemicals, the wrong everything in it. And then he's gone room by room and painted every room a different colour, so it looks ridiculous. Um, whereas I prefer, this is my choice, is um, to use a formula. And if you use a formula and give a customer a formula, which is what I always do, I don't tint paint, so I hate it. Um, then you just say to them, it's this colour from this fan depth, from this brand and this, this type of paint. And they can buy exactly the same thing again if they need to. And you put it on the invoice. You know? <coughs> this guy, um, I mean, this is probably what a lot of people would do. They would uh, do exactly what he's done, buy everything on special with it. It ends up looking like shit, you know. So anyway, just a third video of this. Is a, you know, there's a lot in this, learning how to, to fix this sort of stuff. Um, but uh, hit the like and subscribe if you want to see. I'll be doing more videos of this, more power to reviews, um, and giving you a quick rundown on my life the last few years. I haven't been painting, uh, I've actually been in the army. So um, I'll uh, do a video on that. And I've got to do a shout out to two other YouTubers, which I will do in a separate video. That I think if you, if you subscribe to my channel and you like my content, which is I've got 150 videos, a lot of shit videos, but there's some good stuff on there, particularly the one to ten painting videos if you watch that um, but what I will do is I will um, do a separate video and um, talk about them and why you should look at them because these are two guys or I'm going to say two guys that aren't tradespeople but they're very very clever with what they do uh, one of them's a builder and one of them as far as I know is a, he's an engineer nearly an engineer he dropped out and the guy the stuff the guy does, does is, um, is pretty special um, you know, a lot of little tricks and, and doing things unconventionally and, and that's what it's all about, you know. Uh, anyway, so thanks for watching. Click the like and subscribe and uh, see you next time.